Let's move on to number two. We've got a few problems on the screen, but let's look at number two specifically. Give an example of a chemical or physical process that illustrates the law of conservation of mass. Remember, the law of conservation of mass states that whatever mass you have on the reactant side of, uh, of a reaction of a chemical equation has to be present on the product side. Okay, through the process of a normal, ordinary chemical reaction or physical, uh, physical change, matter cannot be created or destroyed. So exactly how much you start with has to be exactly how much you end with. So we're looking for that idea, and we're just coming up with either a chemical or a physical process that illustrates that, uh, that law. Here, I'm going to use the idea of the different states of water. Okay, so we have solid water, which is ice. We have liquid water, which most people just call water. And then we have uh, uh, vapor water, or water vapor, uh, gaseous water. Most people call steam. So if we have a glass of ice cubes, okay, a glass of ice cubes, they will have the exact same mass all together, okay, if you mass them all together. They'll have the exact same mass when the ice is completely melted into liquid water. Okay, the mass will be the same. Now it's true that the volume of uh, that water will change once it uh, moves from the solid state to the liquid state. Most people know that water becomes more dense when it moves from the solid state to the liquid state. So it actually uh, inhabit, it actually take up less volume, a smaller volume. However, the same number of water molecules are there in the end as were there in the beginning. So the total mass does not change. In other words, the mass is conserved. It's not lost. It's not turned into something else.